a couple, who thought they were very important, wanted to take some photos at my gazebo. I'm a 50-year-old woman, and every August I rent a place in Ontario, Canada, for 10 to 14 days. My rental comes with a cabin, a private deck with a hot tub, and a furnished gazebo. It's the only one with a gazebo. There's a smaller cabin next to mine, just east with a dock and hot tub. I return from a quick trip to the store and start unpacking my car. That's when a young woman, who I'll call Yibi, walks over and gets on my deck. She's wearing a bathrobe, either fresh from a shower or the hot tub. Yibi, hi. I just wanted to let you know that my partner and I are planning a photo shoot in your gazebo tomorrow morning. I'm telling you as a courtesy, since we'll need to move your boats out of the way for the shoot. Don't worry, we'll put them back where they belong. The gazebo is connected to the deck that surrounds my cabin, and I have my kayak stored inside the gazebo when it's going to rain, which it has been doing on and off all day. According to the rules, I have exclusive use of the entire area, including the gazebo and deck. The owners made it clear during the orientation that no one from the other rentals is allowed to enter my area. It's private space, just for me. I'm standing at my cabin door, holding grocery bags, and I'm shocked that EW thinks she can just take over the gazebo that comes with my rental. EW starts asking me personal questions, are you here by yourself or with your husband and kids? Do you own this cabin? How much did it cost? How long have you been staying here? She's asking way too many questions and it's getting annoying. EW fires off her questions rapid fire, not giving me a chance to respond. I interrupt her, firm but polite you're in my private space. Please leave EW tries to downplay her actions, saying I'm just being friendly. But I stand firm no, you're intruding on my space and invading my privacy. Your questions are intrusive and creepy. You will not be doing a photo shoot tomorrow or at any other time in my gazebo. Please leave now. Edo responds in a snippy tone, no need to get snippy, which ironically, she's doing herself. She continues, we're doing the photo shoot tomorrow, so don't interfere. Given your attitude, I think it's best you leave for town by 8 and don't come back until 2. I stand firm, that's not happening. Get off my deck. Get out of my space now. EW stamps her foot, childish-like, and says, you're being unreasonable. You're the only one with a gazebo. You need to share, I firmly respond, no, I don't. Leave now I go into the cabin, lock the door, and immediately message the owner. I've been renting this place for years, and the owner and I have become close friends, which gives me confidence in getting this situation resolved. The next day, E. W. and her partner didn't show up for their planned photo shoot. And to top it off, the owner had to go to their cabin the following morning to chase them out. They were still in bed an hour past checkout time, overstaying their welcome. Story 2 My father-in-law thinks he can use me to get his son a green card. He actually said that's how he sees me as a way to help his son stay in the country. Note it's me again, and I'm back with an update. If you've read my previous posts about my father-in-law, you already know the situation. For those who haven't seen them, I'll try to find a way to share them. After everything that's happened, I'm definitely scheduling a therapy session. As soon as I get back to the US, I'm going to need it. I met my fiance two years ago, and it was love at first sight. He's from Korea, and I'm from a white background, so we do have some cultural differences. But our main issue is that he had to return to South Korea to renew his visa, and unfortunately, it was denied. So, we decided to apply for a K-1 fiancé visa, which our immigration lawyer recommended. We met all the requirements, and thankfully, we got approved. His interview is scheduled for September 12th, and if all goes well, he'll be back in New York with me in October. The long distance has been tough but I was lucky enough to visit my fiancé in Korea for two and a half weeks. On a side note, his parents are quite wealthy. While I love and respect them, they can be frustrating at times. During my visit, my father-in-law kept making comments about my diet, saying I need to eat healthier. We only shared a few meals together, and when we did, we all ate the same food, but I just had smaller portions. I'm petite, 4 acid and 118 pounds but I was recently diagnosed with high blood pressure, which I inherited from my dad. However, my father-in-law doesn't seem to understand that it's genetic and has been making rude comments about it throughout my visit. There have been other comments that have bothered me, but I won't go into all of them. During lunch, he said something that really upset me. He told me he feels lucky that his son found me because now he has an easy way into the US. I was taken aback and asked him what he meant. He replied, it's so hard to get into the US 
But now, thanks to you, his son has full access. I felt like he was saying that I'm just a means for his son to get a green card. It took a lot of self-control not to burst into tears. My father-in-law also went on a tangent about how I need to learn Korean and that he expects our future child to speak Korean. I understand the importance, but my fiancé and I aren't at that stage yet. He also made disparaging comments about my fiancé changing his major from aviation to data science, which I've been hearing since last December. It's strange that they never mention these concerns to their son, but only share them with me. He again brought up the financial loss due to the career change, to which I responded, I understand that you lost money, and I may not fully comprehend that, but all I want is for your son to do what makes him happy. I'm unsure if I'm just being used for a green card. My love for my fiancé is genuine and unconditional, and I know he feels the same way. I've never experienced a love like this before, and I can feel its depth. However, I'm seeking your opinions. Do you think I should share with my fiancé what his dad said about having easy access to the U.S. because of me? Should I be open with him about his father's comments? Story 3 I've been telling my parents for years that my sister has a sense of entitlement, but they never listened until now. I'm 17 years old, and I've seen this behavior in my sister for a long time. My 15-year-old sister has always been selfish, even as a young child. She never wanted to share with others and only thought of herself. She expected everyone to do things for her, but she wouldn't do anything for anyone else. As a little kid, that kind of behavior is normal, but she never outgrew it. My parents always brushed it off, saying it was just her personality. My sister has always been particularly rude to me. She orders me around, demanding that I do things for her, like making her food or paying for her stuff. She expects me to do everything she wants, but when I ask her for something in return, she yells at me. The I can't remember the last time she did something kind for someone without being asked. All she does is shout. There have been times when I've been bedridden with a chronic illness, feeling violently ill, and I've asked her to get me water but instead of helping, she shouted at me. Meanwhile, I constantly make her food and drinks throughout the day because if I don't, she won't eat. She's also incredibly rude about everything. Whenever someone talks to her, she responds with an attitude or shouts. It's exhausting trying to have a conversation with her. I try to say nice things, but she still manages to be rude and scream at me. It's awful. And yet, my parents never say a word to her about it. But if I even slightly raise my voice, I get scolded. I've pointed out to them countless times how they favor her, treating her like a perfect little angel, coddling her, and rarely ever disciplining her. Meanwhile, they've always been quick to discipline me. When I bring it up, they act like I'm crazy. She's extremely manipulative. She always plays the victim card, twisting things to turn my parents against me, even when she's the one in the wrong. I warn my parents that if her behavior continues, people will eventually get fed up with her in the real world and I'll have to cut ties with her. But again, they didn't want to listen. They just brushed it off as normal sisterly behavior, saying it's because of sisterly love. They didn't think it was concerning behavior. That was until we went to a family reunion this week. My cousins, a 23-year-old man and a 12-year-old boy, stood up to her and humbled her. She was acting out with her usual toxic behavior. She was being her usual rude self, talking down to my cousins and rolling her eyes at them, just like she does to everyone else every day. But my 23-year-old cousin wasn't having it. He told her, listen, if you keep acting like this in the real world, someone's going to slap you. You need to cut the attitude, but my sister just responded with a condescending MMM. Sure. Okay. As if he was stupid. Then, my 12-year-old cousin spoke up and said that he always feels like she's judging him because she constantly glares at him. Finally, my parents couldn't deny the truth anymore. It was a huge wake-up call for them. They realized that her behavior isn't just limited to our immediate family and that outsiders see it too. They understood that she treats people she's not close with the same way she treats me and them. Now, my parents are taking a firm stance. They're telling me not to get her food and water all the time and that she needs to start doing things for herself. They're pushing her to be independent and actually disciplining her when she's toxic. But she's not taking it well at all. She's been screaming at me, even though it's not my fault and I haven't done anything wrong. It's about time. But I'm relieved that my parents are finally taking a stand and not treating her like a perfect little angel who can do no wrong. I just hope they follow through and don't go back to coddling her. 
it's crucial that they maintain this newfound firmness.